Dr. Amit Patel is the first person to use stem cells, adult stem cells, in, in the heart, in the, in the patient's heart. He is a cardiothoracic surgeon, has published numerous papers, is doing numerous clinical trials, and um, we've done a lot of work together on, over the past three years, I guess, four years. How, how long have we known each other, Amit? Uh, I think, yeah, at least four years, Tom. Yeah. Um, and Lee, I've met Lee again, I don't know, four years ago or so. Um, I, actually, I actually met Lee asking to use his telephone at a conference um, <laughs> when he was with uh, Progenitor Cell Therapies. Um, Lee's background is over the past 10 years, he's been acting in the area of developing stem cell therapies, basically from bench to bedside, in terms of helping other companies to do this. So a Lee from the Lee offers the industry perspective. Dr. Patel Amit offers the physician perspective, and um, myself, I'm CEO of the company Medistem. Medistem is developing the menstrual blood derived endometrial regenerative cell, the universal donor stem cell, using it for critical ischemia type of peripheral disease. So what I wanted us to talk about in the beginning is this whole idea of regenerative medicine. To me, this concept was a very scary concept in a way. It was scary because if you really think about it, as a society and as an industry, a lot of the work we've been doing traditionally has been focused on identifying a molecular problem and then making a small molecule inhibitor of that pro of that molecular problem. Um, and that has been, at least in my mind, what's been going on for the past century, if you will, of drug development. The concept of regenerative medicine, in many ways, is a lot different and a lot more appealing to me, my background being immunology, because with regenerative medicine, you're asking the body to heal itself, to amplify its own processes. We all know the salamander, if you take a salamander and you cut off the limb, it regenerates. The big discovery, the big paradigm shift in my mind, and I love both of your opinions here, is in regenerative medicine, we started realizing some of these repair processes exist in the human. So that's a small, small extent. You have a heart attack, and there is some regeneration, but that they can be amplified. So that's, to me, regenerative medicine. That's what it means. Uh, Lee, give us your... Uh, concepts, your thoughts on what it means to you from your perspective. Well, um, so th thanks for inviting uh, me, Tom. I, I look forward to participating. This is this is a, I think this is a, a really exciting medium, and I like the concept of of it just being a a, a conversation, if you will, in regenerative medicine. Um, you know, I agree. This is a, this is a, this is certainly uh, I'm uh, I'm just mimicking um, um, other people's sentiments when I say this is, a, this is an extremely exciting, uh, exciting and, and potentially paradigm-shifting approach to medicine, as you say, in the sense that it's, it's not just um, trying to treat conditions from a palliative perspective, but trying to remodel, uh, regenerate, repair, restore um, uh, the body, cells, tissues, or organs uh, from from injury or, or disease, and I, and I think that it, the the challenge with regenerative medicine, of course, is that it represents a, a host of different mo modalities or, or approaches to trying to be curative, and of course that includes s using cells as therapies, but it also includes non cellular approaches like. Um, biological or non-biological scaffolds, devices, even non, even small molecules, which can perhaps be used, as you have suggested, to, um, to trigger the body itself to be restorative or regenerative in a way in which we haven't used small molecules before, or other bio, um, bio, bio, biological um, mechanisms mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. used in a, in a novel way. So, so it represents a very exciting but very diverse field all with one goal and that is to be paradigm shifting in our curative rather than palliative approaches. How about you Amit, what's your thoughts on in general the concept, what does that mean to you regenerative medicine? Well, it, 
It's a great concept of how the salamander can regrow. And our biggest issue in regenerative medicine for our patients has been that the regenerative part is probably far from reality. But the rejuvenation part of how can we get our bodies to heal them themselves or getting older dysfunctional organs to function more younger or actually turning back the clock is a reality today. Regenerative medicine clinically has been really used for about the last 10 years in cardiovascular diseases. And what we see is that patients do get better, but when people ask for specific mechanistic realities, they're still not there just because we haven't figured out what the molecular targets are. And our goal is how do we take old dysfunctional tissue and make it act younger or stronger. And that's where we see most of regenerative medicine right now. It's really a rejuvenation. So we're taking older dysfunctional tissue and making it work younger again. But we haven't truly regenerated or repopulated organs yet, yet in patients. In our animal models, we can see that. But for patients, regenerative medicine is still in the future, but rejuvenation type therapies our reality today. Now, the purpose of this channel, this um, show, is to be as open as possible. Um, so I'm going to ask a question that maybe is a silly question um, regarding the salamander. Did you guys see it was on TV a while ago? Someone chopped his finger off and then he put some extracellular matrix and apparently the finger grew back. What was that story all about? Is that true? Did it really happen? or? Uh, Amit, do you want to comment? Uh, it actually really did happen because the group that worked on that was in a lab right beside mine. Really? So we did see this patient and saw the matrix and actually saw how this actually can help patients. But it truly is uh, isolated, but yet still very promising that using a matrix-like substance that actually came from the bladder of a pig actually helped a patient grow the distal part of their finger back. So it's a great isolated uh, source of where we see regeneration in patients. It may not be at an organ level, but at least growing a, a part of a finger back is both structurally, functionally, and quality of life for that patient is a significant impact. Well, <laughs> I'm just curious, is that something that is reproducible or is there something special with our patient to just whatever we know there actually have been other patients who have had the exact same therapy uh, I'm actually surprised that they haven't uh, pulled all the patients who've had this therapy together and pu actually published it to get it out there to show that this was just not a one-hit wonder type product but there are other patients who have had benefit from regeneration or regrowth of the distal digit of their finger. Um, excellent. I didn't, I didn't realize I guess, that there was uh -huh, other cases. Go on, Lee. I, I guess the other thing that I would add, I mean, it, you know, it's an exciting, it's exciting example of, of something that, 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 that looks and functions exactly like what we see in a, in a, in a very, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the salamander instance. And I guess I, I, I agree with Amit's general statement that we haven't been, we haven't been, um, we haven't succeeded in, in, in being, how shall I say, as regenerative as we want to be with, with a lot of the organ models that we've pursued clinically yet. But I think we have, we've made some very small but, but uh, an incremental but very significant baby steps toward it, both in terms of, of, of I, I would say, in, in, in a lot of instances, modestly regenerative, but also maybe you could say more along the lines of replacement than regenerating. Um, you know, you can look, for instance, at the example of the, uh, of the, of the woman with the trachea in the UK. It was a multidisciplinary, multinational team that, you know, actually uh, replaced her trachea with, uh, with, uh, um, uh, with tissue that was, that was generated outside of the body and then put into her. Tony Atal is doing the same with bladders in children and even on the on the sort of the the, the more superficial level uh, we see um, repair restoration slash regeneration of 
of skin um, in uh, open wound scenario, not unlike what uh, you know the model year. Uh, we'll be pursuing in the Medistim um, trial, Tom, where you know we're able to close wounds and to and to grow um, skin over wounds that otherwise aren't aren't repairing um, mm-hmm. through the through the application of of cells and sometimes cells and, and matrices. Yeah, yeah. No, this is. Now, let me ask a, a, a quick question. In the studies where they make the valves, I've seen that they made valves from. Um, uh, artificial matrix, the cardiac valve. How do they do that? They just put mesenchymal cells on the matrix, so they go and they get a valve, or how does it get the three-dimensional structure? That's a good question, Tom. So you actually have to create the valve one of two ways. Uh-huh. Either you get the matrix from a cadaver valve, uh-huh. decellularize the valve, take the patient's own bone marrow, uh-huh. and put it in a bioreactor with the matrix. Mm-hmm. The, the other way is exactly as you said, take a mesenchymal cell to seed it and trying to make it a universal valve. But most of the valves that have actually gone back into patients in Europe all involved a decellularization process, taking the patient's own bone marrow, putting the matrix valve and the bone marrow in a bioreactor for up to a couple of weeks, Mm-hmm. and then implanting the valve into the patient. Uh, it's a great concept, but the problem has been some of the natural defenses of the body have still affected those valves so they don't keep their structural integrity. There's somehow still a degradation or a decrease in the structural function of those valves. So it's great potential, but we still need to improve on the reliability of the valve. But what I still don't really understand is that I did bad in anatomy, I guess, um, in histology. The valve is made of what? Just one type of cell? What's a cellular the, the component valve, of a the valve? The valve has multiple. So you have smooth muscle and endothelial. So it's multiple cells that actually line and are on the undersurface of a valve. That's what, that's, what, this, mm-hmm, that's what I thought. And this is why I was a bit confused. So you're telling me I take from a dead guy, treat the valve, with what, with acid or something to take the cells off, I put bone marrow cells, and the bone marrow cells somehow the matrix instructs them to make smooth muscle endothelium and to keep that shape, is that the idea? The idea is great, what actually happens is you'll get early endothelial and some smooth muscle, Mm -hmm. and when it actually gets re-implanted into the patient, that's when the true cellularization process happens. So the bone marrow just kickstarts the process. But until you implant it into the patient, oh. you don't get the true uh, cellular replacement. Wow. So and you're it's, saying, during that process, uh-huh. it's during that process where we see some sort of weakening or a lack of structural stability in that matrix cadaver valve. So you're saying and I think are- the real challenge there mm-hmm. is that is the vascularization, right? It's the angiogenesis, uh, so that so that so that it actually integrates. Is that the challenge, or uh, that's part of it? So angiogenesis at a microscopic level—that's what the bone marrow contributes to. Uh, the bigger question is: so the valve looks like a valve, and early will function. It's maintaining the structural strength, and that's one of the key issues in a lot of the organ regeneration is you can make everything look and early on function like it should but does it have the structural stability so it's basically is the scaffold strong enough to maintain long-term function so the durability becomes the issue you can get the conceptual valve to open work close and even histologically it will look like a valve Mm 